Well, hello, everybody. This is Pastor Bert with your Sunday forecast. I hope you're well. Uh, I'm doing this while I'm traveling. Uh, so, uh, but I do know that it's going to be rainy on Sunday. That's at least what the forecast is. High of 43. So, ugh, you know, but a really good day to be uh, in worship uh, with us uh, in the sanctuary. Now, so uh, that's the, you know, kind of ugh, kind of forecast for Sunday outside. Inside the sanctuary, we will be having, um, you know, kind of bright, sparkly, uh, with all the Christmas Advent uh, decorations up. Thanks to everybody that worked so hard to make that happen. And, um, you know, comfortably warm and a chance of, well, kind of making connections. And uh, there is uh, just a, a, a great passage of scripture that we will be working with on Sunday. It actually picks up uh, exactly where we left off last Sunday um, with uh, Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth is uh, Zechariah's wife. They have tried for a long time. Sorry, people people kind of parking next to me. Uh, they tried for a long time to have a baby and could not. And um, then there is this amazing promise by Gabriel that uh, Zechariah had to kind of make sense of. In, in the weariness, a lot of times we have to kind of work to make sense of what's in front of us, right? So uh, this week we're uh, picking up with Luke chapter 1, verses 24 uh, through 45. I'm going to read that for you. I know I didn't read last week, but I'm going to read that for you uh, so you can have a chance to kind of anticipate, maybe kind of reflect on it as we come uh, into worship on Sunday. So Luke uh, 1, 24 through 45. Uh, afterward, uh, Zechariah's wife Elizabeth became pregnant, and she kept to herself for five months, saying, This is the Lord's doing. He has shown his favor to me by removing my disgrace among other people. Verse 26, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, she, uh, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these uh, words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of of uh, David, his father, and he will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth, remember Elizabeth, uh, has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all all women, and he has blessed the child that you carry. Who do I have this honor? I'm sorry, why? Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill 
the promises that he made to her. Now, if you keep on reading, Mary busts out in the song. It's just a really kind of an amazing moment. But uh, this Sunday, this Sunday, we will kind of remember all this great, great message to Mary, but also Elizabeth's part of it. There, There is this connection. Even in the uncertainty and the weariness of our world, the connections that we have, the community that forms uh, around us that we're part of are so vitally important. And uh, we will spend some time with that kind of connection. We're also going to hear from Isaiah 40, uh, 1 through 11. So if you want to look at that, that's awesome as well. Now, uh, also, I want to uh, just encourage you, if you haven't signed up and you got uh, a little bit of time on Tuesday night to, to come and join uh, me and some other folks in conversation about this series. Um, it's an Advent study. We are actually doing two more sessions this coming Sunday and next, I'm sorry, this coming Tuesday and uh, the following Tuesday. Um, actually, we have to kind of cut it a little short because um, the the uh, Tuesday that would be in sequence is the day after Christmas, <laughs> right? So um, we're going to gather together, have a, uh, some some good conversations. Man, we had a really good conversation last uh, last night. I'm recording this on Wednesday. And uh, if you have an opportunity to join us, that's super. Or you can use the, uh, the journal uh, on your own as well. So the way that you do that is you go to our website, uh, sterlingumc.org, and uh, there you'll find Christmas at Sterling. Just uh, go to that page. There you'll find the links that you'll need to sign up and get the information and get the journal. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, we'll, we'll take you. Uh, we'd love to kind of spend some time with you that way. Finally, I just wanted to kind of like give you a book tip. Um, and this is... Um, uh, you know, I will make no money from this whatsoever, but I really uh, just want to encourage you maybe uh, now or into the new year to pick up a copy of the Methodist book of daily prayer. Um, full disclosure, uh, the writer is a buddy of mine, uh, Matt Miowski. Uh We went to seminary together. We studied together. He's a good, great, great pastor and uh, a really good guy. And so he's put together uh, with some other folks that the Methodist Book of Daily Prayer, and I don't know if you could see that right or not. It's available uh, wherever you pick up books. Uh, I believe it's uh, on Kindle uh, as well. And uh, in it are uh, a series of uh, daily prayers that are rooted in our United Methodist tradition, but also are just, you know, very, very well considered. Um, now, he says in the very beginning, in the introduction, he says, Man, life's hard. And there is a weariness. Have we talked about this? There is a weariness to uh, our life and our experiences. And it does not just simply go away by taking a day off or taking a vacation somewhere. There is this constant sort of grind. And he offers this a very kind of brief prayer practice uh, that holds, uh, if if you do it, if you kind of participate in it, holds a lot of potential to kind of, you know, provide that space, that connection in prayer that uh, would be would be helpful and, and spiritually fruitful in, in your life. Uh, as I picked it up, I found it to be just wonderful. So uh, maybe it's something you want to kind of gift, gift to yourself, or maybe it's something that you want to pick up in the new year, you know, New Year, New You uh, kind of thing. So um, just, uh, again, the Methodist book of Daily Prayer by Matt Miofsky, Um Just really, really helpful resource. Like I said, I'm not making any money off of it. Uh, and Matt doesn't know I'm doing this, but I, I really wanted to kind of commend that to you. I also want to commend, uh, you know, taking care of yourself in this season. It's hard. Uh, and there's so many things that uh, demand so much from us. Um, and so look after yourself and look after your neighbor um, and, you know, be an instrument of love. So I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I would love to see you on Sunday online or in person. God bless you. Take care. 